So we will start discussing how to write a program, computer program in C. So up to now, we have discussed how to write a program using uh, Scratch, which is a visual programming language. So what we did was, so in our program, we had some inputs and we had some processing in our program and then what we had was we had some output so any program will have these components so now we will discuss how to do these things in other programming languages so we will start that with uh, C now so so to write any program in uh, so we have a computer especially a cpu so which is the main brain in the computer so which uh, execute instructions we give to the program so so all the computer instructions will be executed by this. So when we give computer instruction, we have to give them in the language it understands. And each program should have a starting point. Okay, so, so when we have a pro program, we should have a starting point. So now we will see how we can or how the starting point of C program look like. So it will look like something like this. We will discuss this later. So it will call int main. So you have to write this. So there are different versions. And so we have something called return and we say zero up now. And then we will write instructions. Instruction one instruction to something like that so the computer uh, program will start here and ends here and uh, it will execute instructions sequentially so this is very important one after the other so we will uh, see how we can uh, uh, instruct the computer then there's a problem so we write in a so in 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 scratch we had some blocks and when we click the flag button it execute one after the other similarly we have to execute this C program. So the computer cannot understand C. So what, what this CPU is an electronic device. Okay. So this electronic device can understand only electric signal. So what are the electric signals? So it is voltage high and voltage low. So this is V. So we say this is one and this is zero. So we have only two signals. Yeah, computer can understand. So if you want to write an instruction to the computer, we have to do it by a sequence of bits. Okay. There are some protocols or formats, so it will understand, uh, say, instruction 1, say, 2, or something like that. So we don't know. So it depends uh, on the computer uh, hardware. So, but, uh, so we can see now that this is, this instructions difficult 
for human. The humans are not very good of uh, understanding these kind of instructions. So what we have done, the people have done, they have written a converter. We call it converter. So we have a human readable instructions and so when we send this to this converter we call this a special name and it outputs this kind of uh, binary instructions so we call this uh, converter a compiler or sometimes interpreter so they have different functions or functionalities but it what it does will be uh, it will read the human readable instructions and convert it into uh, binary instructions which we call it machine call machine language because this language is the only language where the machine or PC can be understood. So what are the human readable instructions? So we have some languages like C, C++, Java, Python. There are so many okay? uh, languages we can use to write computer instructions. So, they are, so we call them computer programming languages. And so for each of these language, we have to have a different compiler. So if you have a C program, you need a C compiler. So there are different C compilers available. The main or the most famous is called GCC, Genome C compiler, which is open or free, we call it. And then we have different some other compilers like uh, Turbo C compiler, Intel, Microsoft compiler, C compiler. So there are so many uh, compilers written and we will be using some of these. So the, the most famous is called GCC. So it is of open and no, everybody can use it uh, without any charge. Okay, so we will be using mainly GCC compiler. So now we will write a computer program using C. So, so our computer program will look like this. So we should have a starting point. So we discuss this. So we should have something called main, and then we should have something called return. So we will discuss this when we discuss more about C, why we need this kind of a format so this is the standard this is a kind of standard format so you can use it with many uh, compilers so some compilers are a little bit different some are standard compilers so if you're using a standard C compiler you will be fine with this okay so now we have this we don't have any instructions so we don't have any instructions but we want to try converting this into machine code. So we will see to do that. So I will go to the command prompt now and I will list the uh, files here. So you can see you have a file called hello.c. So, uh, so I can use the GCC compiler and for this GCC compiler I have to give the file name hello c and then the output uh, machine code name the object output name so I will say it hello and I will press enter and it will compile or convert to the machine code and it will generate the machine code file hello so I can list it uh, now so you can see you have that uh, hello file so you can run it so given the path for the uh, executable uh, machine code so dot dash is the current directory and you can write it like uh, run it like that and you can see nothing happens because we don't have any instructions so we said that 
um, in our introduction we need first thing uh, we need is to output something uh, to the screen uh, so this is a very complex procedure so you have to generate some output and you have to uh, convert it into colors or pixels and send it to, to the terminal on the monitor so so we cannot do it by ourselves there are so many computer instructions involved in this so what we will do is we will borrow some small program we call these small program functions from a library so similar to if we don't have a book we go to the library and borrow it similarly we can borrow small programs written by the compiler or the language uh, uh, pro producers or language writers so we can borrow in C using a keyword called include and then we have to give the library name so this is called standard std is for standard input output library so all the libraries in C are have the extension dot h so stdio is the standard uh, input library so so in c so the this is an instruction computer instruction so when the compiler uh, find this uh, instruction slash include uh, uh, brackets uh, the angle brackets stdio dot h it will include those library to your program so now you can use the small functions of the programs inside that function okay so now we will uh, include this so our first program first uh, function is called put c so here we can put a character to the screen so so if you say a character something like this this is uh, wrong in C. So if you want to give a text or character, you have to uh, uh, enclose it with uh, uh, a comma, so uh, uh, with uh, single quotations or double quotations, depending on if it is a character, it's single quotation. If it is a set of characters, a string, or we call it a text. It's a double quotations so when you so the computer should know uh, where to end the end your instruction so now if you write like this so your instruction start here in in this position and it will go until here because the instructions end with semicolon so this is wrong because we we have two instructions first in put c and the second one is return zero so if you want to end this instruction here you have to tell the compiler that your uh, instructions end here so now you can save it okay so now you can save it and go and compile it again It's an error. Actually, it's put not put C, it's put char. It's put the character. So now uh, we have that uh, uh, program. So so you have to give the exact instruction so exact function or oh, this is a function uh, in the, from the library so you have to give the exact the same name otherwise you will get an error so you can see i got an error so now i will go here and compile it again and now you can see i don't get an error so now i will compile i have the program like this and now i will run it and you can see the program output character C here okay so now so I want to output set of characters so you have to 
potent diffonent uh, name or different function we call it put s put string okay and now you can give a string so to give a string you need something like this hello c so now i will save this program and i will go here and compile it again gcc hello.c output hello and i will run it and you can see now that uh, output is printed in the terminal okay so now we can output something but uh, sometimes we want to format different uh, things uh, like printing numbers printing uh, different uh, widths change the width or something like that so if we want to mix numbers uh, and uh, characters or something like that so if we want to do that we want to format our output so to format our output we need a different function so we call it that function print format print f f for format a formatting print and we can do it from printf okay so this is a formatting print so here we need to give the formats and the uh, how to print so this function is more advanced and you have to give all the formatting uh, to this function so if you do go here so i will clear the screen and if you run type it and if you run it again so you can see hello c is output by put c and this one hello c from printf and output in the same line and there's no a uh, new line here so here you have a new line then the next instruction was printed in the next line but here there's no new line the uh, next prompt uh, C, uh, linux prompt is printed in the same line so if you want to give uh, because we don't have any formatting here so if you want to uh, print a new line so you have to tell the printf function uh, expli ex explicitly that you should print a printf line otherwise it will no not output any uh, formatting so how do you output a new line so there are special there's a special character for a new line so we call it backslash n okay so this is a special character so it's just two characters but when you when this printf functions find this backslash n so you cannot use it for any other uh, thing so if you have a backslash n it will print a new line end of the uh, this uh, string so we will see how to do that so we will compile it and we will run it and now you can see so here in the previous example you don't have a new line character but here you have a new line character and this was printed in the next line so now we have printed uh, one line so we will try to print uh, several lines like this so printf hello from c and first instructions and then printf have a nice day so we have two uh, instructions printed or two instructions so you can see now you can imagine how it will print it how will it print it so it will print this and uh, you can see we don't have any new line so this should be printed in the same line so we will go here and compile it and run it and you can see uh, we will have the same line so now how, how do you change it you can change it by inserting new line character and now it will look like so i saved it and i compile it again and you can see now so this one has a new line and this one doesn't so this one if you want to print the next line in the new uh, in a new line so you have to compile it and now you have the 
same way so so i will print a new line here a new uh, text uh, printing from c this is a text okay so now you can see if you compile it and i will uh, say something like this so a new line again so this one will have three lines now okay so we have a error expected before the return so there's an error so the error is uh, before return you need the semicolon so you don't have a semicolon so that's the error so i will clear this screen compile it now it's prime run it so you have three lines now so i will instead of new line after this text i will insert a t so we will see what happens now so it's a new character and now you can see you have a space between not a new line but a space so it's a new format so this is called tab so you can have several tabs if you want so three tabs now it will print after the first line three tabs so you can see so you have three tabs after the after this text you have three tabs printed so there are special uh, characters or special values like tab, new line, even vertical tab, so something like that. So how do you, uh, so the, the thing is now how do you print something like a backslash? So if you want to print something like this, what to do? Okay, because every backslash has a meaning, backslash t is a meaning, so if you put a backslash, it will give an error saying that you don't have the format so we'll see so that means unknown escape sequence 0 is 40 maybe the space backslash space doesn't have a meaning so if you have a backslash it will look for a special format like tab new line something like that but backslash space doesn't have a meaning so if you want to print a backslash you have to new backslash and another backslash so the meaning of this is so this is a special character starting and the special character is a backslash so now if you compile it again and now it's compiling and you can see you can print a backslash like this so similarly if you want to print something uh, a quotation So this will give an error because this quotation mark, double quotation, will end the string like this. So you shouldn't have an error here. Definitely. Okay, you don't have an error, but you don't print anything. So if you want to print this by, uh, double quotation, say, so if you want to print this within double quotation, so you have to put a special character backslash and now so we clear this so now you can see this uh, special quotation mark is printed uh, with this special uh, uh, mark so if you want to print special characters special uh, characters like uh, number quotation percentage tabs new lines so you have to give it with special format with backslash okay so now so we have done that now we want to so we have print text now we want to print a number 
So what is the difference between a number like this? So this is fine. So you can print this as a number. If you print 45 and I need uh, this new line as well. So you can see the number 45 is printed. But actually, this is not a number. Okay, so this is a string with two characters 4 and 5. So how do you print a number? So if you want to print a number, we have to print it. Okay, so we will we'll try printing a number like this. What will happen? We will see what will happen. Okay, so we have an error. So it's a large error, big error. So we will try to understand this now. So the error is here. Okay. So it's an say it's an integer value, a whole number, and expected a constant char something, but uh, argument type is integer a number. So this means you have to view uh, a string. So if you want to have meaningful uh, error messages. Sometimes you can try with uh, command capital wall. Okay. Sometimes it gives uh, better uh, commands, better error messages, but still give the same error message. That means we cannot use an integer in this. So this is the error. Okay. So how do you print a value? So like a number. Okay. So he says we always have to give a string something like this okay and if we want to print a number here we have to tell we have to give a special format as well so special formats like numbers are given as percentage and with a symbol so percentage t is used for integers and now so we have one integer here and the integer value we should pass with this like this and so after integer you can print a value so after integer we want to print a new line as well okay so now we will compile this hopefully no errors good and run it and you can see now 45 is printed so how do you know that this is a number so we will see if it is a number we must be able to add this so we will say 4 to 5 plus 45 so this is a number and the, if it is a number the computer will add them and print 90 okay no errors so you can see now uh, we have printed 90 that means it's not a string it's a number so the computer understand this it as a number and you can do whatever you do with numbers with computer or calculate addition is one uh, thing you can do okay so this is how you print numbers okay so we can print two numbers now so you can print mixed numbers and uh, integers or numbers and num uh, strings okay so we'll try something like this okay so what is the meaning of this now so meaning of this is number it's a first number and then you print space and plus space and the second number space equal mark it's a string space a string uh, text or character and then special a second number and then space and then a new line so we need three inputs here three values in this so we have to pass three values now the first one is 45 and the second one is 45 and the third one is 45 plus 45 this you can add them you can pass 90 or so you can see it's source 90 uh, or you can pass the expression you want to print so the 45 will be substituted here and the second 45 so we will say this is 40 to make it clear 
Otherwise, you will not know whether it's exactly the same value or different value because the value is same. So, okay. So, now we will see how it looks like. Compile it and run it and you can see 45 space plus space 40 space equal space 85. So, this is what we want. So, first number space plus space second number space plus equal space, third number space, and new line. And so we have three numbers in this string. So this is a string. So it is included between double quotation, so it's a string, a set of characters. And you can see we have three places where we want, we have numbers, and we have to, after this string, we have to use commas to separate these inputs as numbers. So you can see now, you can print numbers and strings together. Okay. So what about this now? So we will pass some okay. some values like this, decimal values, not the whole value, whole numbers. Oh, so we have a lot of errors now. Okay, so we will see what is the warning. It's a not an error, it's a warning, actually. So we can be, we must be able to run it now. Actually, okay. So we will run it. So clear. We will compile it and we will run it. So you can see, since it's warnings, it's not errors. So you can run the program. So it's compiled and you can see the first number, we put something, uh, what is the value we put? 45.5, but it gives a, a strange value, some strange number, some strange integer. Second one, also the same. The third one, the answer also the same. So it's very strange. Okay, so the warnings, we will go in the warnings. First warning, format, percentage D, expect argument of type integer, whole number, but the argument 2 has type double, okay. So we are giving a different type, so this is a double value, it says, so very nice, okay. And here it is integer, so, and we are asked to use percentage F instead of D, so D is only for whole numbers or integers. And if you are using double values, it says, please use a percentage F. Okay, we have three errors. So we will correct this error first. And we will try to understand what is the problem. So we will clear it. So that we will clear. We will compile it. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, now we have the answer. Correct answer, 44.5. Plus 40.4 equals 85.9. So very good, and everything is fine. And now we have right, we have printed these values. Okay. So now we will check what is the reason why this thing happened with uh, this different formats. Uh, if we use a wrong format, it gives the very strange values. So we will discuss or we will just examine how this has happened. This will, by examining this, we can understand a key concept of formats, number formats in which use in programming or computers. <coughs> so we will discuss uh, why is this uh, format is important. So, so we have uh, numbers and we have two set of numbers. We have whole numbers like 1, 243 and then we have decimal. So 
fractional numbers. Okay, like uh, 24.32, something like that. So what is the difference between this? So we can represent this number as it is because we don't have any decimal numbers. But here we have a decimal point. Okay, and so so we have to have the uh, represent the place of decimal point. So this is very tricky if you want to do it. Okay, so what we will do is we will convert this to a standard format, something like two point four three four two into 10 to the power 1. So now we have, we can represent this as a whole number, as a whole number, because we know that the decimal place is here always, or here, depending on your convention. Okay, And we have something here as well. So we have, this is also an integer and a whole number, and we can represent this number as a whole number as well okay so so what we can do is what how we can represent this okay so we have a sign always and we have the first constant part we call it mentisa okay so we will say constant and then we have a exponent it is this part so we have sign sign value and the constant the mantisa or we have the exponent so we so but the problem uh, with this explanation is that the computer cannot understand this uh, decimal numbers that means we have say from 0 to 9 10 digits okay so we don't have that much of sig signals so we have only 0 and 1 which is binary so any number we have to represent this as binary so if we say uh, 9 so it is 8 no 4 no 2 and 1 say if it is uh, 15 is 1 1 1 1 and if it is 20 it is 16 no 8 4 no 2 and no 1. So this is 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4. So this is 2 to the power 1 is 16 plus and 4, 20. Okay, so, so we can represent any number using binary, whole number using binary. So similarly, uh, and we have a sign bits as well. So similarly, any decimal number we can represent using a binary decimal number. So here also what we will do is we will move our decimal place to here, this here, and represent this as uh, something like uh, uh, 2 to the power. So we have a constant and we have an exponent and then we have a sign okay. so we have to have represent three uh, values okay exponent and this this one we will represent the first one as sign bit so it is one or zero if it is one it is minus or plus or whatever depending on this one if it is zero it is plus or something like that and then we have a large portion for the constant value okay and then the small portion maybe small values because this one is smaller and this one is larger uh, and for so so this is how we represent a fractional value so so for example so now we have something like uh, this we don't know okay some some number okay and we say this if, we, if this is integer 
How do you say it? It's an inhinya. We say those intention here. It will convert this as inhinya. So this to the power. So this is a sign bit, and then to the power zero, to the power one, and so you add them, and you have a number. Integer number. But if we say this is floating point, so this will be represented or converted in a different way. So the first one is sign, and then it will divide this into two parts. Okay. N and E and do the calculation and convert this to a uh, fractional number. So so if you say if you give a value and so if you give a decimal value, it will be something like that. And ask to print using this, it will convert into a different format. So that is how why this happens. So so I give a uh, fourteen point five, and ask to print is as an integer. So you can see it's minus value, sign bit is minus, and then you this is the integer representation of this, and then we have integer representative of this and then we have integer representative of this so but if I use percentage f it will convert this as the uh, proper number so this is very important uh, when you are giving number giving a value and you have to give the correct format to print